Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to prevent XSS in PHP. So right here I have a little uh, blogging application that allows users to log in with a username, which I'm going to do right now, and a password, and then they can create little posts. So normally the user would, uh, would be entering a post title here and whatever they want to write about, and then this information would be sent to the database, and then um, loaded onto the index page right here, just like this post. Here we have the, oops, what in the world, the post title, the author, and the body of the post. So let's create a post. And instead of putting a plain title here, we are going to uh, put some JavaScript here. Actually, no, we'll put some JavaScript in the body, although I could do either. So I'm just going to say, um, this is a bad post. And then in here, I'm going to put script tags. And then I'm going to copy some JavaScript that I wrote earlier, just a couple lines. And all of the, all this JavaScript will do is convert the first link on the web page, which would be the logout page or the logout link or the login page, depending on whether you're logged in or not. Um, it will change it from logout.php or login.php um, to the uh, malicious.php file that's being hosted on my computer. Now, it's not actually a malicious file. There's no malicious code in it. It's just here for the example. So I'm going to post this. And here's the post we just made. And it doesn't look like there's anything here. And that is because all of the input, well, all of the information that I entered in the post body was interpreted as JavaScript or HTML script tags and then JavaScript within. And this is very bad because now if we come up here and check out the logout link, well, now it goes to malicious.php. And if a user were to click this, well, now they're on a dangerous website and they could have their information stolen in one way or another. So let's take a look at how we are going to fix this. So in the index.php file, which is right here, um, first we get the posts from the database and then we extract the post title, the post body and the post author and the post ID from the post and then display the various information on the web page. So here we have the post title, which would be this right here. And then down here we have the post body, which would be this bit right here. Now, what we just saw happen was the post body, this bit right here, or this, get interpreted as JavaScript and displayed directly in the page. So to prevent that, we simply have to encapsulate any user supplied input in the HTML special chars function, just like this. And what this will do is um, convert any special characters into their HTML code representation. Now, what I mean by this is, let's say we have a greater than symbol. Well, it's going to be converted into the, the and sign and then the GT colon. Now, this means that uh, the web browser won't interpret it as a potential HTML uh, tag closing bracket. Instead, it will just take it as the raw string. So the same thing goes for a less than symbol. If it were less than, it would be the and signed LT and then colon. So let's uh, do that for the rest of the input. Oh, and actually there's a, an optional flag that you can add to the function called end quotes. And this will also make it handle single quote characters, which the uh, default function does not. But if you enable this flag, it will. So just, just put that in there for extra security. So let's do this for all of the user input. And the user does technically have control of their name, although it does go through a check to make sure they can only enter letters and numbers. But I don't know, the user might find a way around that. So let's also do that. And I guess the user could potentially manipulate the post ID to be JavaScript. So let's also put that there and then just put the closing parentheses and the end quotes flag at the end. There, so now all of the user input 
is wrapped up in the HTML special chars function with the end quotes flag. And this should be good now. So if we come over here and reload the page, check that out. We see the script that the user entered, which we did not see before. And the log out link is actually the log out link. So let's click that, everything's good. And let's take a look at what happened in here. So, whoa. Let me just zoom in a little bit. No, too much. Okay, so here is the post, the, the was malicious post. And let's edit as HTML so we can actually see what exactly is happening. And as I said, right here, the, the opening um, angle bracket or the less than sign and the closing angle bracket or the greater than sign is encoded to their HTML equivalent. Now, this means, as I said, it's not going to be interpreted as an HTML tag. So any text in here is just treated as plain text and not, you know, JavaScript, which is very, very bad as we have seen. Um, same goes for any other special character um, that could potentially be, uh, you know, used to cause harm. So I hope that that uh, helped you uh, prevent XSS and give you an understanding of how it works and why it is dangerous. Now, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good day. Bye.